Hello everyone, welcome to the lesson. In this lesson we're going to look at a question on application of integration. KCC Mathematics 2021 paper 2, question number 24. So let us jump straight to the question and see how you're supposed to solve that. So the question reads, a particle was moving along a straight line. The acceleration of the particle of 30 seconds was given by 40 minus 13 second, uh, meters per second squared. The initial velocity of the particle was 18 meters per second. A. Determine the value of t when the particle was momentarily at rest. B. Find the distance covered by the particle between t is equals to 1 second and t is equals to 3 seconds. So that is the question. Let us jump straight to the solution and see how we are supposed to solve that. So we shall begin by looking at what you are given. We are given acceleration. That is a part A. You are given acceleration as a 4t minus 13. And then the other important information you are given the initial velocity. Initial velocity is given as 18. And then the information that is given, I think that is enough. Then part A of the question is supposed to determine the value of T when the particle was momentarily at rest. Now, one thing that is supposed to know before you solve that question is that the particle is momentarily at rest when velocity is equal to zero. At rest, uh, the particle, the velocity of the particle will be equivalent to zero. So this is very important and that is what is going to help us to solve that question. Another important thing, uh, since we are given uh, acceleration, how do we get uh, velocity? Now to get velocity, we shall integrate acceleration. That is also something that is very important. So uh, using the acceleration that we are given here, Velocity is given by integrate uh, this uh, acceleration that is a 40 minus 13 and you're going to integrate this one with respect to t. So integrating this we get 40 squared this will give uh, 2 t squared minus 13 t plus a constant c. So that is how we get velocity. Now how do we get the constant c? Now to get the constant c, we shall use um, whatever we are given here. We are given the initial velocity. The initial velocity is equals to 18. Another important thing, at initial velocity, time will be 0 seconds. That is very important. So once you substitute these v and t in this uh, expression for velocity, we shall get the constant. So v is equals to 18 so v is equals to 18 is equals to uh, 2 uh, then 0 minus 13 0 plus c so therefore the constant is equals to 18 the constant is equals to 18 so therefore velocity will be given by 2 t squared minus 13 t plus 18. So that is how we get the expression for velocity. So after getting the equation for velocity, let's go to the question. Determine the value of t when the particle was momentarily at rest. Now when was the particle at rest? The particle was at rest when velocity is equal to zero. Or in simple terms, when the particle is momentarily at rest, velocity at that point is equivalent to zero. So in this uh, question, this is what you're supposed to do. We're simply required to substitute v with zero in this equation for velocity. So doing this, we get 2t squared minus uh, 13t plus 18 is equals to v, which is zero. This one is a quadratic equation. Use any suitable method to solve it. You can use uh, factorization or quadratic formula. How we use factorization? Where I shall get uh, the product of two numbers that are going to give 2 multiplied by 18, that is 6, and the sum to be negative 13. Those two numbers are negative 9 and negative 4. 
so let us factorize 2t squared minus 40 minus 90 plus 18 is equals to 0 very fast uh, factorizing 2t is common here we mean the t minus 2 uh, here negative 9 is common t subtract 2 is equals to 0 so you shall have 2t subtract 9 and uh, t subtract 2 is equals to 0 in this case 2t subtract 9 is equals to 0 and uh, for this equation you get uh, t is 4.5 second that is the first instant when the particle is momentarily at rest the other one you get it after taking t minus 2 is equals to 0 and here you get t is equals to 2 seconds so the answer in that question therefore when the particle is momentarily at rest t is equals to 4.5 seconds or for four and a half seconds and t is equals to 2 find the distance covered by the particle between t is equals to 1 second and t is equals to 3 seconds now in order to find the distance covered by the particle we shall use the equation for velocity we are given velocity so in order to get the distance that is the first thing you're supposed to know uh, so in order to get the distance is part b distance or displacement which is denoted by s we're going to get it by integrating the velocity with respect to t so that is the first thing that you're going to do so since we want to get the distance between t is equals to 1 and uh, t is equals to 3 seconds we need to be very careful here uh, how you're getting the distance between these two times t is equals to 1 and uh, t is equals to 3 seconds first of all uh, velocity uh, is given by we got this 2t squared minus 13t plus 18 that is velocity now a quick look at a rough sketch of a velocity time graph if you have a, a quick look at velocity time graph this is a velocity and then this one is time we have 0, we have 1, we have 2, we have 3. So we want to get the distance traveled by the particle between t is equals to 1 and t is equals to 3. So that we're going to integrate velocity in order to get the distance. So if you substitute in this expression for velocity when t is equals to 0, you realize um, you get 18. Velocity will be 18. If you substitute <coughs> 1 um, t is equals to 1 you will get um, something like 7 wrong, something like 7 there you get 7 if you substitute t is equals to 1 in this expression for velocity you get t is equals to 1 if you substitute 2 substituting 2 you will get 0 you get velocity 0 and this is a why it is interesting if you substitute t is equals to 3 in this um, equation you will get negative 3 so it will be somewhere here so what do you notice there's something that you notice that if you try to draw a rough sketch let me draw a good one if you try to draw a rough sketch this is just a sketch you would notice that there will be a certain part let me just do it here there will be a certain part of this curve that will be below the x-axis so you want to get a uh, time or not the distance between t is equals to 1 and t is equals to 3 so when you get the area under the curve that will give the distance if you get the area under the curve between one one and three you get the distance survey but now you cannot get you cannot integrate directly from one to three directly from one to three why because you can see there are two parts here one part is uh, between t is equals to one and t is equals to two is above the x-axis then there's another part that is below the x-axis from two to three so for better results 
and for accuracy uh, you're going to work it in two parts that is the most important thing that you're supposed to know so therefore this is what you shall do we shall get the distance now between 1 and 2 so the distance will be obtained by integrating velocity between 1 and 2 so this is uh, 2 t squared minus 13 t plus 18 so let me so integrating that uh, this is what you're going to get when you integrate this is uh, 18 with respect to t when you integrate this you give uh, 2 t cubed divided by 3 subtract 13 t squared over 2 plus 18 t plus a constant then the square bracket we're integrating this one between 1 and 2 so we first start by substituting 2 so you get 2 and 2 cubed divided by 3 minus 13 2 squared divided by 2 plus 18 2 we're going to ignore c since we, when you subtract you get subtract then subtract substitute 1 or uh, you get 2 thirds minus 13 over 2 plus 18 so that is what you get so working out um, the first one there this will give um, 16 over 3 you get 16 over 3 so you get 16 divided by 3 um, minus this will be 26 plus 36 Minus 26 plus 36 then subtract when you work out these two thirds subtract um, 13 over 2 2 thirds subtract subtract uh, 13 over 2 plus 18 is what you get to working out this working with a calculator you get 15 yeah, you get 15 and uh, 1 over 3 and subtract uh, 2 thirds minus 13 over 2 plus 18 this give 12 and 1 over 6 and this will give 3 and 1 over 6 meters so that is the area above the x-axis so this is the area this is the area that you obtained that is a 3 and 1 over 6 now let us get the area below the x-axis that is between 2 and 3 between 2 and 3 so we shall integrate now between 2 and 3 so 2 t squared minus 13 t plus 18 so this will give 2 t cubed minus 13 t squared over 2 plus 18 t plus c square brackets between 2 and 3 so let us substitute uh, 3 so this will give 2 3 subtract 13 plus 18 then you substitute um, 2 substitute 2 this will give uh, 2 2 cubed subtract um, 
subtract 13 so give a 3 2 squared divided by 2 plus 18 2 like that so very fast uh, working out this on This will give uh, 27, 54 over 3. This will give 18. Subtract this will be 117 divided by 2 plus 54. Subtract this on. We already got this. This will give 16 over 3 minus 26 plus 36. This will give 36 like that so working out 18 subtract 117 over 2 plus 54 what do you get for this this one will give 13 and a half this will give 13 and a half then subtract this one you already got we got this one earlier on somewhere we got this we got it here. How was it? Twelve. Uh, we got it. Fifteen and a third. We got this on the whole of these fifteen. And that it is here. I've seen it. And the third. Now, when you work out these, you notice that you get negative, because it is the area below the x-axis. So subtracting these, you get one negative one and five over six. You get negative one. And 5 over 6. Now, how do you get a negative answer? How do you get a negative answer? Now, you get a negative answer because the area, as you can see, it falls below the x axis. But we ignore the negative since we can't have a negative area where it is 1 and 5 over 6, like that. So, we shall ignore the negative and write it as negative one one and five over six like that now we have the two areas we have the two areas now now what is remaining uh, is simply getting the sum so let us get the sum therefore when you look at uh, the area above the x-axis is three and one over six three and 1 over 6 plus the area below the x-axis 1 and 5 over 6 1 and 5 over 6 so therefore the area between or the distance since when you're integrating we're getting the area below the curve which is giving the distance that is what I'm talking about the area so when we work, at, work it out uh, this is what you're going to get we add this will give exactly five meters that is the distance between uh, t is equals to one and t is equals to three and that is um, simply how you're supposed to solve that question uh, by simply integrating the velocity and being careful by working it into parts so thank you so much